Now, if you're a Python programmer, you definitely heard about pip. So pip is a package manager for Python using which you can install packages, update existing packages, or even uninstall packages from your local environments, from your Python environments. So let's say you want to install an external library in your Python program. Let's say you want to install requests, which is basically a HTTP library using which you can send HTTP requests from your Python program. It's a pretty popular Python library. So if you want to install this in your project, you would just say something like this, pip install requests. And obviously you have to make sure that pip is already installed on your machine. And when you execute this command, pip is going to download the source code of this request package and it's going to install it on your computer. And then you can go ahead and use it in your source code. And actually let me show you uh, how it works. So I can just copy this command, come to my terminal, paste it here and look at that. It's going to first download the package uh, from the Python package index, short for PYPI, and then it's going to install it on your system. So now, if I go to my Python shell and if I say import requests, you can see now I'm able to actually use that particular library that I've just installed on my computer. So you get the point. You can install and use external Python packages in your project using pip, using a simple command that goes like pip install followed by the package name. Now, what if I tell you that this simple and innocent command can actually steal critical information from your computer, like your API keys, your SSH keys, your passwords, your files, or it can even like install in ransomware and encrypt your files. It can do lots of stuff because when you're installing some library or some package using pip install, you're actually executing something known as a setup script in order to actually install that package. And that setup script could potentially contain something malicious that steals your critical assets and send them to a hacker. Before moving on with the video, I just want to let you know that I have created an SQL injection for beginners course, which is available for absolutely free of cost. So if you're new to this whole ethical hacking penetration testing domain, then this is definitely going to be a value add for you. I suggest you go ahead and check it out. It's absolutely for free of cost and it also gives you hands-on training as well. So go ahead, check out the link in the description. And one more thing, you will also be getting a completion certificate from Simply Learn when you complete this course. So yeah, why not give it a try? Link is in the description. Let me show you a demonstration. This is a package that I've created and uploaded to the Python package index. And as the name suggests, you can see that it is a malicious pip package. It contains something malicious in its setup script. So let me actually go ahead and quickly install this command pip install malicious pip package for demo. I'm going to copy that. Just making sure my HTTP endpoint is on and let me execute it. So you can see it has downloaded the package and then it has installed it. Cool. So now my package is installed and I can import my package code and use it in my project, whatever, but that's not the point. Check this out. This is my HTTP endpoint where all the stolen details are sent. You can see that I have three get requests, one, two, and three. And I have received some base64 encoded details like this. So let me actually go ahead and decode these base64 encoded messages. So let me copy my first message and I'll use this base64 decode tool. So you can see the decoded data has my API keys. So these API keys are actually specific to one of my recent projects. I have recently built a Twitter bot and these API keys are actually my Twitter API keys. Okay, let me go ahead and copy the second value and let's see what this is about. So you can see these are also the environment variables, but these are like the global environment variables of my whole Linux machine. Now let's check out the third message. Oh, look at that. This is actually my open SSH private key. So this is my SSH private key. All these critical assets are stolen just because I installed some random malicious module with pip by using a simple command 
like pip install followed by the package name. That is enough for hackers to steal my critical assets and, and they can pretty much do anything because this enables them to get an arbitrary code execution on your machine when you install their malicious packet. So for example, they can like spawn up a new process, a new Python program, like a reverse shell or something, or they can spawn up a new ransomware, etc., and do all that kinds of stuff. So you get the point. It's actually very, very dangerous to install random malicious packages. And I'll tell you one more thing. You can see here in the statistics, in the GitHub statistics, this malicious package has 47 stars, 18 folks, and two pull requests. Now with those stats, this package may even be a legitimate thing, right? Now check this out. If I open this up in a new tab, you can see that this repository does not belong to this package. And this is because I have linked another GitHub repository, one of my GitHub repository, which has 18 folks and 47 stars. I have linked this GitHub repository to my malicious package on pypy.org. So it is possible for threat actors to spoof other GitHub repositories stats on their own malicious packages. And as a result, they can trick users or developers who are looking to install some external packages into thinking that this is a legitimate package that they can use in their project. But once they install this package by using pip, that's it. That's the end of the story right there. They don't even have to use that package. They just have to install it. And this gives them code execution on the victim's computer. I don't know why, but for some reason, pypy.org doesn't validate whether uh, the provided GitHub URL actually belongs to the package that is being uploaded on, the, on their website. I don't know why that is the case, but for some weird reason, they just allow whatever GitHub repository URL and they'll just grab the stats from the provided GitHub repository URL and display it on the package page like this. Now, there are many instances where malicious Python packages are caught in the wild. And one of the most recent incident is this. So recently, Sonatype discovered some Python packages that are basically stealing your secrets, like your AWS credentials, environment variables, network information, etc., from your machine and sending them to hackers. So these are the malicious packages that are caught. The first one is loglib modules, which appears to target developers that are familiar with the legitimate loglib library. So obviously these modules are removed from pypy.org and you can't install them anymore, which is good. But malicious packages like this can come up every day. Anyone can create an account on pypy.org and they can push their package into it and trick people into installing it. Now, I know it is very scary considering how easy it is for anyone to do this and also how easy it is to impersonate other famous Python packages and tricking you into installing a malicious one instead. So obviously there are workarounds for this. It is not a vulnerability. It is the intended functionality of pip to execute the setup.py script. Now, if you want to stay safe and avoid such malicious packages, the first thing to do is obviously to check if this GitHub repository that is mentioned here is actually the one that belongs to this package. Just make sure that it is what it claims it is. And after verifying that the GitHub repository actually belongs to the Python package that you're about to install, you can also go through the code, the actual code to check if it has anything malicious. And this is a win-win situation for you because you get to read the source code, you get to understand the package better, and you also make sure that it has nothing malicious. And another thing that you can do to make sure that you stay safe from such notorious things is to always install from a wheel file directly and not from a source distribution. A wheel file is nothing but a compiled version of a Python package. Some packages provide you already compiled wheel files. For example, if I now go ahead and install requests by saying pip install requests, 
you can see that it has downloaded the request.wheel or the whl file. So this means that we are downloading already compiled project into our own local machine and then we are installing from that wheel file. Now this completely eliminates the need for the setup.py script to execute. So in this case, the setup script is not executed on our machine because the wheel file is already generated. But when it comes to source distributions, you have to first download the source distribution and then execute the setup script, which creates the wheel file. And once you create that wheel file, you can install the package on your system. And this is obviously dangerous because you just saw what could happen. The setup script can contain malicious code. So while installing with pip, you can actually tell pip that you want to only install from a binary or from a wheel file and not from a source distribution. And you can do that by passing an additional flag to pip while installing a package like this, which tells pip that you only want to install from a binary file. So now if I try to execute this, you can see that it says that it was not able to find any matching distributions for this particular package. And that is because the wheel file, the pre-compiled wheel file is not available for my malicious package. Only the source distribution is allowed and hence the installation failed. But however, some big open source Python packages only offer source distributions for various reasons. So you might not want to use this particular flag with all the packages that you want to install. But if you're installing some random package, then make sure you use it. But if you're installing a package that you know is legit, that you know is popular and well-known, then you don't have to use this particular flag. Because as I said, some packages do not offer pre-compiled wheel files since they have complex functionalities. So yeah, I think that will be it for this video. Now, if you want to learn how I created the malicious uh, Python package that I showcased in this video, I have written a blog post about it. Now, obviously this is only for educational purposes. Your intent matters a lot. Do not use it with ill intent. You may get into serious trouble if you do so. So this article contains the steps that I followed to build and deploy my demo malicious package to pypy.org. So I leave the link to this blog post in the description. If you're interested, go ahead and check out the link in the description. I hope you learned something new. So the next time you're installing a package, a Python package with pip, think twice, think about this video and only install it if you know for sure that it is legitimate and not malicious. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked it. If you did like this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below and also leave a comment in the comment section below. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from my channel. So I'll see you in the next video. Until then, Cheers.